Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to continue working with matrices and in this section we're going to use the calculator to solve systems of equations using matrices. And there are actually uh, more than one way to do this and the calculator can handle doing it different ways which is kind of neat. You can, uh, you can even check your work uh, by solving it by two different methods if you like. So there's a little bit of variety. So we're going to go through that real quick and I just want to let you know that you actually have the basic tools to do this already. You know how to enter the matrices. Um, you know how to do basic uh, inverses and things like that. So you're going to be able to solve systems of equations. We're just going to put it all together in this section. Okay. The first thing I want to show you, let's go into the matrix menu. We still have our matrices here that uh, we've defined before. And what I want to show you first is that, uh, you know, you have to know a little bit about matrix math in order to understand what I'm about to say next, but I'll do my best to try to give you a little bit of a lesson as we go. So here's a three by three matrix, right? Now matrices can be used to represent a system of equations. Uh, you know, usually if you remember back to algebra when you had three equations and three unknowns, you had X, Y, and Z for your unknowns. And so you would have literally three equations. Maybe it was 2X plus 3Y plus Z is equal to 5. And then you'd have two more equations, you know, that are different, but each of them have X, Y, and Z, and they're equal to something. And so you need to solve that. And so you can do substitution or graphing or whatever to find the, the solution where all of those things intersect. Um, but you can also use matrices, and it's actually a little bit easier to do that. In order to, to really, there's two different ways to handle it, and I'm going to show you two different ways. The first way is if you construct your matrix, let's go back into the matrix menu. If you construct your matrix, we'll go to edit, in what we call an augmented matrix. And what we call an augmented matrix. All right, An augmented matrix means that you'll have your coefficients for your for your system over here and then on the last column you'll have what's on the other side of the equal sign so rather than talk about it um, let's just go in and look at this let me go ahead and change this in, from a three by three let me go ahead and change it to a three by four to make four columns so after I've changed it to a three by four matrix I want to go ahead and change the matrix itself to a system of equations that I happen to know has a good solution just for purposes here so I'm going to put two 2, 7, negative 1, and I will go and explain all of this stuff in a second. 2, 1, 2, negative 2. Whoops, it's not a negative 2. That's a positive 2. And then on the final line, 4, 6, 1, 15. Okay. So what do I have here? You're like, what is he doing? Well, system of equations, when you want to, to solve it by a method of row reduction or, or uh, augmented matrices is another way that you'll see it in your book, you need to write the entire equation in a single matrix. So the way you would read this literally is 2x plus 2y plus 7z is equal to negative 1. So you see you've written your first entire equation in this matrix. In your textbooks a lot of time, they will put a little dotted line to separate what's on the other side of the equal sign from your coefficients, which are over here. But just to make sure you're clear, let's keep going. The second equation in your system is 2x plus 1y plus 2z is equal to 2. So you see it's very simple. I mean, you're just literally typing in the numbers. 4x plus 6y plus 1z is equal to... 15. So that is a system of equations and so we're going to use this method of row reduction to solve it and you're going to see how incredibly easy it is to do that. So let's get out of here, clear the stack out. So I did that. Let's go back to matrix, go to the math menu. Now you can go down past number seven and let me show you a few things. All right. A lot of times when you're doing this row reduction stuff with augmented matrices, you all know that you'll you'll do lots of different things to simplify this matrix. You can swap rows. You've got a little function to do that manually if you want to. You've got different functions down here to multiply rows by a number and to add rows, to add something to a row. And these functions are listed down here. I'm not going to go into them uh, here because in, on, in all honesty, I don't think you're going to use them that much. Um, you might, but the calculator can actually completely do all of the work 
in one, one button push. So I think it's more important to talk about these up here. So let me go uh, up to ref up here in a second and show you what it's doing. When you do this, this stands for a row echelon form. And when you press this button and then you tell it what matrix you're trying to put in there. So we'll do A and close it and hit enter. And look what happens. It's changed the matrix because matrix A, let me go and just show you what matrix A is just for comparison purposes. Matrix A is this matrix down here. So you see there's a 15 in here. There's a bunch of other stuff going on. But the matrix when you use the ref command, the row echelon form or the row echelon form, um, basically you have all diagonals that are one and then everything below this diagonal in the coefficient side is zeros and whatever is all the numbers that are left up over here is just an artifact of the math that you do to get here so you have to look at my, my matrix algebra tutor to understand what we're really doing but basically you're doing all this row reduction stuff multiplying a row by a number and adding it to another row um, swapping rows around there's a few different rules that are legal to do in matrix math and so when you the goal is for this command is to get all of the diagonals equal to a one now this system of equations that would be here for instance if you read this off it would be 1x plus 2y plus 0z is equal to 4 and so on and so on this system of equations is actually exactly equivalent to this one in other words the solution of this is equal to the solution of this one it's just a simplified view of the matrix you can sort of think about it like a simplified fraction the fraction is the same if you simplify it it just looks a little bit different so here you go. It's just that to get there, you use all those row operations that you learn how to do in matrix math. So I don't think you're going to use this that much because the calculator even has a more powerful command. I just wanted to show you that it was here. If you ever want to get to lower triangular form like this, it'll spit it out for you. And you can you can use this to completely solve the system. But, but rather than go and look into all that, I'd rather go back into the matrix menu, to the math menu, and go down a little bit more and we'll find something even better and that is not the row echelon form let's go to the row reduced echelon form so we'll click this guy and we need to type the matrix and this is going to be we'll hit matrix A this is going to be a fully simplified row reduced form of this matrix so when we hit the enter button let's check out what happens what we get now is a nice fully simplified matrix and look it's completely gone above and beyond what the last command did. Not only do we have diagonal ones with zeros below, which is what we had before, but we also have zeros above the diagonal, which is a completely row reduced form. And so basically this command basically does all of the steps to get to what we looked at just a minute ago, but then it does additional steps with multiplication of rows, etc., to make these guys zero. And notice that, that, the, co that the coefficients on the right hand side are different. Now the reason we did this is because, don't forget, you can imagine a little dotted line here and there's an equal sign here, basically. So the way you can read this is 0x plus 0y plus z is equal to negative 1. So what this is telling you is z is equal to negative 1. What this row is telling you, is, because you have zeros here, is that y is equal to 2. And what this row is telling you, because these two things are zero, is that x is equal to one. So this is the solution of the system of equations. It's just that simple. You type the, the equations in, just like we talked about. You do this row ref command, type your matrix in, hit the button, and then you read the solutions directly off. x is equal to one, y is equal to two, z is equal to negative one. And this is what you're taught to do in a matrix class or in an algebra class. You're taught to take your augmented matrix. It's called augmented because you have the coefficients over here and you have what's on the other side of the equal sign here. And you're taught to do all of those row reduction methods, swapping rows, multiplying rows, adding rows, multiplying by fractions, all those things, the entire goal of which is to get the matrix into this form. Because once you can get it into this form, which is exactly equivalent to the original problem we typed in mathematically, it's very easy to read the solution off. That's why we do it. It's like simplifying a fraction. There's a great analogy, actually. So we can see exactly what's happening here. We can calculate the solution. So this is one way to solve a system of equations. This is your method number one, I told you. You just type the matrix in. Uh, let's go back to the matrix menu and, and uh, well, heck, we can, just, uh, we can just put it right on the stack there. We just type the matrix in. This is 
2x plus 2y plus 7z is equal to whatever. If you had a larger system of equations with four or five variables, your matrix would just be bigger. But the last column is always going to be what's on the other side of the equal sign. You do all of your equations like that, and then you just stick it into that command for row reduced form. Out's going to spit a nice simplified matrix, and you'll be able to read the answers directly off of there. And so that's very, very useful. Now there's another way to solve a system of equations using this calculator that's uh, really, really um, good. And you'll probably need to learn how to do it because you will be asked to do it on your test. And that is, how do you solve a system of equations using matrix inverses? Uh, so this is the second method. So what we need to do is go back into the matrix menu. For this guy, it's a little bit different. Oops, I made a mistake. Let me go back into the matrix menu. Go back to edit. Okay, for this guy, we do not want to have the entire system of equations, including the on the other side of the equal sign, um, in in our in one matrix. So let's change this back to a three by three. And these are our coefficients now. This is just simply a coefficient matrix. It doesn't contain what's on the other side of the equal sign. So you read this as two x plus two y plus seven z. You know, 2x plus 1y plus 2z, 4x plus 6y plus 1z. So let's go back into the matrix menu. Let's go back to edit. Let's go back to edit B. And let's change it to be a 3 by 1 matrix. Because for the B matrix, which is what's on the other side of the equal sign, you always want it to be a vertical matrix. And we're going to make it negative 1, 2, 15. Now we have everything in place. This is exactly the same as the previous problem. This B matrix is what's, is what's on the other side of the equal sign. And it's vertical because you have to use your imagination a little bit here. When you go and you look at matrix A, this is, these are the coefficients. So you would have matrix A and then matrix B would be the vertical matrix over here. And that's on, what's on the other side of the equal sign is, is, the big, is the big deal here. So you may have seen in your classes um, where you represent this as a matrix equation. So you would have matrix A times another matrix that would have X, Y, and Z is equal to, and on the other side of the equal sign, you have matrix B, which would be all of the stuff on the other side of the equal sign. So the way you solve this guy is all you have to do is you take uh, the inverse of matrix A and multiply it by matrix B. If that's a little bit hard for you to visualize, then it's probably just because you haven't covered this in your class. It's a, it's a pretty standard thing when you have a, a matrix equations represented by a coefficient matrix and a matrix for the other side of the equal sign. The way you solve it is you just take the inverse of matrix A, multiply it by matrix B. So let's see what we, what we get there. Let's go back to the matrix menu. Let's stick matrix A on the stack and let's make it, actually let me clear this and go out of here. Let's go back to the matrix menu, let's stick matrix A on the stack, and let's make it an inverse. So we have matrix inverse multiplied by, we'll go back to the matrix menu, over here, matrix B. So matrix inverse of A multiplied by matrix B, which is what's on the other side of the equal sign. We will hit enter, and we will get a new matrix back. It's a column matrix, one, two, negative one. And if you remember, this is exactly the answer we got when we did it by row reduced form. What this is telling you is, the way you read this is, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, z is equal to negative 1. So you, you just get another matrix that contains uh, x, y, and z. So in one method, you create one giant matrix and you go into the row reduction uh, part and you get this sort of this uh, diagonal matrix back that has the answers over on the right hand side. Or method number two is you create two matrices. One of them has the coefficients and the other one has the uh, what's on the other side of the equal sign and then you use the inverse to multiply and you get your answer back. Both of them are completely equivalent. That's what we've shown here. Both of them are used. Um, it just depends on maybe your test is testing you on the two different methods to make sure you understand them or maybe in one case one's a little bit easier for you. But I can tell you that doing both of these by hand is just a bear, especially if your equation is bigger than three by three. Even three by three can be difficult, but bigger than three by three, it gets just unmanageable because you have so much row reduction going on or even calculating this inverse here for a large matrix is very difficult. So that's basically it. Now you've got the tools to go and 
use these methods to solve systems of equations in your calculator. It's one of the things that the TI series calculator really does excel at. It's easy to input your matrices. You've got a lot of functions to choose from to get the job done. And uh, when it does the work, it does it very quickly. So play around with it, use it. It's, uh, it's a great thing to use on your test. It definitely will save you time. I would learn how to use the matrix functions over some of the other functions in the calculator because it just saves so much time.